Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, today is going to be Samantha Markle, and her name isn't even Samantha. You know, this is the half-sister of uh, the Duchess of Sussex, Megan. So let's see what, and there's not much on her because she's nobody, but I'll show, tell you what Wiki found, and uh, here we go. Uh, the Duchess of Sussex's half, I can't say that, the Duchess of Sussex's half-sister, Samantha Markle. So this is very interesting. I mean, when I was doing this research, I found out that, I mean, that's not even her name. Her name isn't even Samantha, but here we go. It's just a very short uh, little, um, uh, give you some knowledge about who, who perhaps she is or what she's about. So her name is Samantha Markle, supposedly. She was born in Los Angeles, California on the 24th of November, 1964, and that makes her a Sagittarius. Her birth name was Yvonne Marie Markle, and she's the older paternal half-sister of the Duchess of Sussex, Megan. And now in 2008, she was supposedly diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and has used a wheelchair since then. 2017 is the next uh, uh, reference I can find uh, that she appeared on the TLC special program uh, titled uh, When Harry Met Meghan, A Royal Engagement. And she discussed her half-sister in her own upcoming book, Samantha's upcoming book, entitled The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister. The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister. Insisting it would not be a tell-all book, but merely explore some of the beautiful nuances of their lives. Now, 2018, she told the media uh, she had suffered a broken ankle and fractured knee after her boyfriend crashed a car into a concrete barrier while driving with her and trying to avoid being photographed by a member of the paparazzi. I don't know. It seems to me like she might have crashed her car trying to get front of the paparazzi so they would take her picture, but that's just me. The Florida police have no report of such an incident having been filed, and they have no evidence that it had taken place. Also in 2018, a media... Uh, citing uh, British police sources uh, reported that Samantha had been placed on a watch list maintained by the Fixated Threat Assessment Center of persons exhibiting signs of obsession with members of the royal family. That's a name. She says the listing is a British media attempt at silencing her. Uh, 2019, her Twitter account was suspended, much like uh, former President Trump. Uh, later, it was reported that she was under investigation by the Florida Polk County Sheriff's Department following multiple allegations of cyberbullying. And in 2021, the first part of Samantha's memoir was published. So that's now. And it was titled, or is titled, I suppose, The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister, Part 1. Now, at last report, Samantha, if that's her name, lives with her boyfriend in Bellevue, Florida, USA. Samantha has been divorced twice and filed personal bankruptcy. She says she worked as a mental health counselor, yet is estranged from all three of her children, her mother, her brother, and of course her half-sister, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. Apparently, the only relative who takes her calls is hers and Megan's father, Thomas Markle Sr. Hmm. Hey, Dad. There's a uh, publicity photo opportunity. You want to meet me there? Uh, she has cited the Duchess of Sussex's mother, Doria Ragland, as the main reason behind their estrangement. And uh, no word in why she's estranged from her own mother, her brother, and all three of her children. But anyway, at the time of the royal wedding, she and Meghan had been estranged for almost 10 years and had not spoken for many more. Uh, she was not invited to the wedding of Prince Harry and her half-sister and had not attended Meghan's first wedding uh, either. Uh, Samantha's, or if you prefer her birth name, Yvonne, uh, her own mother has criticized her behavior and remarks to the press saying she's an embarrassment and needs to get some dignity. I like that. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about 
the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. Samantha Markle. I mean, she just, if I understand correctly, she just started using the last name Markle uh, once her sister uh, gained all this uh, new notoriety, not from being a television actress, but from the, um, the royal situation. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. You know, what could I say? I'm not sure what question to ask about Samantha. Is she nuts? I mean, that would be one question to ask. Uh, is she vicious? That would be one question to ask, but they both seem pretty obvious. Um, what can we know about Samantha Markle? Samantha Markle. Is she just an opportunist trying to cash in on her half-sister's um, fame? Is Samantha Markle just an opportunist? Is Samantha Markle simply... An opportunist. Samantha Markle. Is she an opportunist? Um, and for the second question, I mean, there's so little substance to this woman. I don't know that there could be a follow-up question. Um, will she continue to be a thorn in her sister's side? I mean, these seem like obvious answers and questions, but I mean, it's, what else do I have? So the first part of the Celtic cross, um, uh, is she just simply an opportunist? And is she, you know, let's ask if she's crazy. I think I'm going to do that. Let's ask, is Samantha Markle really just crazy? Is Samantha Markle really just kind of nuts? And uh, will she continue to um, be a fly in the ointment uh, of her sister's uh, life? Okay, so we're going to do six cards for the first part of that Celtic cross. One, two, three, four. Five, six. What a mess. What a mess. Um, well, what can, what can you say? So, Samantha Markle, is she, or Yvonne, if you prefer, uh, is she nuts? <laughs> so, High Priestess. So, the High Priestess is, tells us to use our intuition. That's what the High Priestess says. So, as a signifier card for this uh, reading, is she crazy? That uh, says, use your intuition. Well, yeah, she's nuts. I'm sorry, I can't help but let my conscious brain have an opinion here. Uh, but I am just reading the card, and the High Priestess has to do with uh, using your intuition and uh, being in charge. Um, so, yeah, I would say she's she's kind of nuts. I mean, here's a crow with a veil on its head. That's Is that not insane? What is the challenge to Samantha Markle being um, this way? And that would be... Let's see. So this is the nine. Oh, 
The, the Nine of Pentacles is all about having a lot of value, having a lot of money, having a lot of importance, having a lot of value. And so the challenge to her being nuts is that she wants to um, be her sister. She wants to have the value that her sister has, of course. Uh, the basis of this reading, then, is the King of Swords. So the King of Swords, you know, swords are uh, truths and justice and action, not so much, but rules, really. The King of Swords is kind of being in charge of all of your, um, you know, all of your justice, all of your truths. So, yeah, I would say that she is in charge of her truths. And if she's crazy enough, like Trump, her truths uh, become her justice. And uh, I think she's all enveloped in all of that. Yeah, this is going to be a bizarre reading, I can tell you. Uh, the past of this reading, then, is the fool. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to leave it just like that. She's a fool. She, she started off on this new journey um, uh, regarding the opportunity she saw with her half-sister's life, and uh, she's just a fool. Uh, in the sky of this reading is the Knight of Wands. And so a knight is the uh, the member of the royal family who's going to you know uh, defend them. He's going to bring some, and I don't mean the, the, the English royal family, I mean the royal suit of cards. You've got the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So this is the one who is going, is sort of the enforcer of that. And so wands are plans. So uh, she, her highest hope is to be the one who comes up with these plans and pushes them through. So that's the knight of of uh, wands and then the likely outcome for this kind of uh, deluded delusional um, life that she lives is uh, the page of swords continuing to be like a spy in the camp and uh, you can see I, i'm interested in this crow card for the page of swords because you see that the crow has grabbed this sword by the blade i mean this will actually cut off the crow's toes so yeah she's she will cut off her nose to spite her face but now let's see will she continue to be a thorn in uh, in Megan's side, and so we'll get the four cards. I mean, it's obvious. It's just obvious. We'll get four cards out of this. The self of that question: Will she continue to be a thorn in Harry and Megan's side? Is the Empress? Oh yeah, she's going to continue to try to be fruitful and make things happen uh, in this regard. Uh, the um, environment that that's in, then we'll take it from over here, is going to be the Two of Cups, and the Two of Cups are partnerships pledges uh, could be some medical condition. Um, so the two cups are partnerships. And so she's in the environment of partnerships. Oh, I wonder if that's with her, her father, Thomas Markle, or whomever she can get to join up with her in these uh, amazing uh, uh, crusades that she launches from time to time. The hopes and the fears for whether she will continue to be a, a thorn in Megan's side is the king of pentacles oh yeah she's definitely driven to seek some value even in her in the value of herself as a person or monetary value so that's um the fear in my opinion and then uh, the likely outcome of all of this is um the five of cups and of course that's looking back at loss you know this crow is just looking at all they've spilled the emotions and the passions are passing them by and she's got a little bit to, to survive on so yeah i think that this poor deluded woman is just destined to chase um, these um, insane um, problems and, 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 be, and be a thorn in Megan's side from now until. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if we all have someone like that in, their, in your, our families. I certainly do, and, uh, and I know people who do. So there's, there can be someone in your family who just won't give up the insanity, the twist, of their life and sometimes you just have to um, put them aside you know get on with your life don't keep toxicity uh, in, uh, in your life you can't change people people are who they are and I always say once somebody reveals themselves to you either on purpose or by mistake believe them when they've told you who they are believe it and then conduct your life accordingly but uh, for this reading uh, she started out as the high priestess so and that says you know trust your intuition Trust your intuition. You know what's going on here. And it's challenged by the uh, Nine of Pentacles, which is, you know, seeking all of the wealth, all of the fame, all of the value that you don't have. Um, then the, uh, let's see, what was else significant? In this reading, when we got to the self of the question, she came through as the Empress, which is, again, you know, just trying to, uh, having a very grandiose opinion of herself. And then uh, in the environment of the Two of Cups, looking for partnerships, uh, maybe with a medical um, side to this, uh, towards her, her, her insanity. Um, and then in the end 
the the final card was the five of cups which is loss you know and regret uh and um i think that's where her life will always be she'll always be stuck in that in that uh cycle of loss and regret sadly i'm mark my journey through tarot tomorrow's another day stop by we'll do it again ciao for now